of your seat so that we may resume the second half of a contest that just might make you laugh or it could make you cry and stir your soul, give you the strength to go for the goal. It will inspire you, enlighten you, and motivate you to reach. Welcome back to the international speech. international speech. Right. Now, if any of you, like myself, happen to use one of these contraptions that cause commotions or a device of distraction, please, for the sake of our contestants and our audience, I ask that you please either turn them off or place them on silent. Once the contest has begun, the sergeant at arms will secure the doors. Members of the audience are asked to refrain from entering or leaving the room during any of the contestants' presentations. If you do need to do so, you are welcome to do so between the one minute break between each contestant or after the last contestant. And that will be after the ballots have been collected. Now, I am happy to share with you our speaking order, so if you have your little agendas and a pen, let's go ahead and share our speaking order. International speech contestant number one. Ola Lekin Ahmed. Ola Lekin Ahmed. International speech contestant number one. International speech contestant number two. Barry Mixon. Barry Mixon. International speech contestant number two. International speech contestant number three. Yvonne Bailey. Yvonne Bailey, international speech contestant number three. International speech contestant number four, Ken Brzezinski. Ken Brzezinski, international speech contestant number four. International speech contestant number five, Sharice Arrington. Sharice Arrington. International speech contestant number five. <coughs> and international speech contestant number six, Valerie Lyons. Valerie Lyons, <coughs> international speech contestant number six. We are now ready to begin the international speech contest. <laughs> after this and after each contestant, when I signal you, please give me one minute on the clock by, by showing me the green light. International speech contestant number one, Ola Lekin Ahmed. The day you quit is the day you fail. The day you quit is the day you fail. Ola Lekin Ahmed. and fellow dreamers. You see, I grew up in a small town in the city of Lagos, Nigeria. It is a place where average citizens live less than two dollars per day. A place where all we thought about was hope and survival. I live with my parents in the 17 rooms apartments campus, and each of these rooms had five occupants we had now. Myself, two siblings, two cousins, and two nephews. If you do the math, I'm talking between 75 to 85 people living in these apartments. Come. 
place. And we all shared just two bathrooms. For me, one thing in life different from the one I was born into. I decided to pursue the dreams I had when I was just five. The dream that someday I will score a job. I shared these dreams with my parents, but they never believed me. Now, not because they do not love me, of course, they love me more than I do, but because none of my family has ever attended school abroad before. So I went to my friend and shared this dream with them. Guess what he did? <laughs> <laughs> They laughed and said, boy, how dare you think about schooling abroad when your parents cannot send you to a good school here? <laughs> and like us, boy, you are dreaming too much. <laughs> <laughs> but because of the belief I had, I applied for a student visa <coughs> at United Kingdom Embassy. I was denied. I applied the second time. I was denied. I applied the third time, provided every information required of me. Ladies and gentlemen, I was very confident. But I was denied the third time. Six years of failed attempt. How did you feel? the last time you failed. Because for me, I was done. I headed home very devastated. I have 20 miles to walk, but after walking 10 miles, I was tired. And something dropped my attention. I stood up and walked towards it. A book. Outside a bookstore, tied to goals by Brian Tracy, I opened it. And one of the ideas shared was, the day that you quit is the day that you fail. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> so I applied the fourth time. But now, at United States Embassy, on the day of my interview, we were placed in groups. And every single person that ran before me, every single one of them, were all denied. At that moment, I was shaken like a leaf. I saw Lincoln, this interview has not smiled for the past five hours. She's really mean. <laughs> As I stood before this interview, I said, young lady, even though she looked sexy. I <laughs> said, <laughs> my mother is the most beautiful person on earth. But today, you are the prettiest person I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she smiled and asked me every question she could think of. And said, young man, come back in two days and get your visa. <laughs> before. So you might be thinking that your life is different from mine. <coughs> but why I focused all of my energy upon securing a visa? I was given far more valuable lessons about life. You see, I learned that the key to fulfilling your dreams is not determined by what happens to you or around you, but by what happens within you. I also learned the awesome power of persistence. As a wise man once said, that at first, if you do not succeed, you must try and try again. But more than anything else, I learned that the only time we quit, the only single time, is when we fail. Because dreams Ah, oh, like flowers, when we water them. They grow, but when we do not.
one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballot. International speech contestant number three, Yvonne Bailey. Keep the light on. Keep the light on, Yvonne Bailey. Multicolored cake. She said, "Take it." 
I said, I can't take that. She said, if you change your mind, I'll mail it to you. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it. But after Sissy died, her mother said to me, take one of fi Sissy's figurines. She wanted you to have it. So I grabbed one. I went home. I Googled it. It's worth $750. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like Sissy. And at her funeral, many people said, she did this for me. She did that for me. She called me. She drove me. And as we watched her body diminish from cancer, we noticed she remained hopeful. She remained positive to the end. That's a lady who kept her light on. Nelson Mandela said, it is not the mere fact that we have lived life. It is the difference we have made in the lives of others that determines the significance of the life we have lived. There's a man in Miami, Florida. His name is Robert the Raven Craft. Robert the Raven Craft runs eight miles a day. 365 days a year for the last 40 years. Yes, he has inspired hundreds of thousands of people to follow him on this run. He said, I received a peace I sorely needed in my life from this run. They say, I have received physiological and psychological benefits from this run. This man is the Pied Piper of Miami Beach. The Raven said, Everyone has a place where they shine, and this is where I shine. Marianne Williamson wrote in her book, Return to Love, when we allow our own lights to shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. My son came home from school one day with a project he had been working on. He was learning about facial expressions. He was excited. He said, Mom, look, this is angry. <laughs> he said, Mom, this is sad. <laughs> he said, Mom, this is happy. I laughed. He said, Mom, I choose happy. I said, Philip, I choose happy too. And I realized in that moment in time that Philip smiled. He made everything that was wrong all right. And I also realized that Philip's smile was one of his greatest gifts. And when he shared it, he made the world a brighter place. When we keep our lights on and other people encounter us, it encourages them, it inspires them, it strengthens them, it helps them in some way. I got a question for you. Is your light on? <laughs> is your light on? I want to know, is your light on? <laughs> it is a choice to keep the light on. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Mr. Contest. Can we please have one minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots? International speech contestant number four, Ken Brzezinski. You've got talent. You've got talent, Ken Brzezinski. Do you know the song Summertime? I would sing it for you, but Toastmasters who have heard me they said, Ken, do not sing at the contest. 
You might not be surprised to find out then that my grown, considerate, respectful, polite son, when he heard me sing that, said, Dad, <coughs> shut up! <laughs> Rude, huh? I drove my own son to rooms. Singing that song to different girlfriends has led them to say, Ken, please stop it. Why do I keep singing to girlfriends? I don't know, but that's another story. <laughs> and I've convinced myself I don't have the talent to be a singer. But this speech is not about my lack of talent. This is about those people who've got talent and don't do much with it. You probably know people like that. You may even be one of those <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, there's something to be learned from people who've got talent and don't do much with it. A lesson that you might find useful when you hear about it later. I first got a hint of this when I met Nancy. Nancy was from Chicago, blonde, <coughs> attractive, but shy and unsure of herself. When she told me she was going to sing at a student recital, I said, oh great, Nancy, I'll come and hear you. I'd love to hear singing. And you know the kind of student recital I'm talking about, where a music teacher puts on an event for students so they could try their stuff out in front of a live audience like you. You've probably been to those things. Yeah. Very common. The first student got up. Young man, nice gray suit, neat tie, slick back hair. He sang a Broadway show tune. And I thought, yeah, he's good. I could see him in a, in a Broadway show someday. Yeah. The next student got up, middle-aged woman, kind of stocky, gray hair, lawyer type. She sang a pop tune. I thought, hmm, needs a little work, but she's a student, okay. And I could see it happening. Then Nancy got up in her unsure way and announced she was going to sing an aria from an Italian opera. <laughs> she, she went to center stage and started singing. You know that show, America's Got Talent? You know that one? And sometimes some really ordinary person gets up there and unexpectedly just blows the audience away. That was Nancy. What came out of her was a voice that filled the whole room. It was beautiful. It was melodious. It, it even gives me goose pimples right now to remember it and chills. Afterwards, Nancy, you've got talent. <coughs> oh, Ken, it's nothing. Nancy, you've got the talent to become a professional. Oh, Ken, it's just a hobby. Nancy, if I had talent like that, I would sing everywhere, all over. Oh, Ken, I just sing for fun. For Nancy, just singing for fun was enough. That was enough for her. And then I realized, maybe Nancy doesn't do much with her talent. Oh, it's just a hobby. It, it, it's, it's something I do for fun. Because she really doesn't believe she's got talent. Oh, it's nothing. And maybe all those people who've got talent and don't do much with it, don't believe they've really got talent. <laughs> and that was the lesson to get out of this. Now, you might be thinking, what does that lesson have to do with me? I don't have talent. <laughs> oh, I can see some of you are thinking that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then this lesson is for you. <laughs> the next time you meet somebody like Nancy, who barely ever performs, despite her talent. Or you meet a gifted athlete who rarely competes. Well, this is the one for you. A brilliant student who doesn't even study. 
You might use your <coughs> postmaster skills to say, believe me, you've got talent. Oh, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, timers. International speech contestant number five, Charisse Arrington. Come to the edge. Jump. Come to the edge. Jump. Charisse Arrington. Doctors. 
we exchanged the hello of pleasantries, and my mom was asked to take a seat. Shortly thereafter, one of the doctors walked over to my mother, and with the deepest look of compassion in his eyes, he said, shattered into a million pieces. In the days ahead, my mom, who was a spunky, independent, <coughs> firecracker of a little lady, became a woman who needed 24-7 care, and me, constantly by her side. I was there every day with my mom, proudly, but this was new to me, and I didn't know how to manage it all. So, so after my income dried up, all my work endeavors. My mom, who tried to encourage me, gave me every good piece of advice. But that began my year-long pity party, and knocking on the door of my mind were all the big party guests of my despair. <laughs> and they brought with them whiny friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I let them in. Knock, knock, enter mood swings. Knock, knock, enter confusion. depression. You see, I was helpless to face the mental follies of my inside frustration. So, I allowed them to torment and push me around the edge. Oh yes, I knew it well, or so I thought I did. I didn't know what I would do as I stood there every day on the edge. But one day, I decided enough was enough. And I knew I was living in a space of lame excuses. Excuses, sophisticated lies we tell ourselves. And then we try to tell to everyone else. <laughs> Excuses. <clears throat> but I learned something from all of this. I learned that life is always <clears throat> extending out his hand boldly for us to claim our rightful place at his table and sit down in the brilliance of our value and worth. Mm -hmm. I also came back into remembrance to think. Oh, how awesome the gift of mothers. <coughs> I'm so grateful to my mom, who has continued to be one of my greatest teachers. Reminded me that my problems were only opportunities dressed in disguise. And you'll be happy to know that my mom has continued to make a jump. A jump from being unwell into a jump of better well-being. And as for me, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back to living life, having fun, branding and building my life coaching practice. Fellow jumpers. May I leave you with an invitation of thought? If you feel fear, doubt, worry, come to the edge, jump! If you feel <coughs> as though it's too late to be who you might have been, come to the edge, jump! <coughs> Life is whispering. Will you?
come with me? Ready? Come to the edge. Timers. International speech contestant number six, Valerie Lyons. Who's the master? <laughs> Who's the master? <laughs> Valerie Lyons. Walking to the front of the classroom, she's walking very slowly because she's shy. When she gets to the front of the classroom, she pulls a card from the card slot and she reads it. Six times six is. Six times six is. Six times six is. But she doesn't know the answer. The entire classroom is laughing. And the tear streams down her face. She looks at the teacher, and all she sees is disappointment. So she stares at her patent leather shoes as a warm stream cascades down her leg. Okay. That's a defining moment. From that moment on, she had difficulty speaking in front of a group. Now, many of us have had moments like that, probably not that extreme. But something in your past made it difficult for you <coughs> to say a speech or do many of the things you want to do. There was a defining moment in my life. It was this movie. I love martial arts movies. My sweetie will tell you, I love martial arts movies. One of my favorite movies is The Last Dragon. See, in The Last Dragon, there's this guy, Bruce Leroy. He was a <laughs> <laughs> His teacher said, you have made it to the final level, but he didn't believe he was good enough. He felt that he needed a master. But there was somebody in this movie, a nemesis. His name was Show Nuff. Show Nuff was walking around believing that he was the master. He was saying, who's the master? Who's the master? Who's the master? Many of us have had people like that in our lives. <laughs> to walk around and ask us, who's the master? 
but we couldn't say that we were. Mm -hmm. What is a master? A master is a teacher, someone who's controlling, or a person who's in control of their own life. If you could not step forward, I'm telling you right now, it's time to move forward, it's time to change. Let that part of your life go. Those people are gone. What you can do is, if you are a person who is visually impaired, and you can't see, and people say that you can't do something, show them how you can see using a different eye. If you are a full figure queen, yes, you can win a beauty contest. Because, honey, you are this, 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 and that. You are everything. You can be like me, a woman in her 50s, looking gorgeous and fine, and right. you can get on the stage in a bikini and get some 25 year olds and win.
Everyone, I ask you please to remain silent so that the judges may complete their ballots and that the ballot collectors may collect them as well. Thank you. Contest Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you. Yes. I, mean, I don't know what it's like to be a woman to have hot flashes, but I'm just telling you that. With six contestants, I think I know. <laughs> what an awesome contest. Yes. And now, Rocking. It's important that we have a chance to meet some of our contestants, so to do that, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our Table Topics Contest Toastmaster and Northwest Division Governor, <laughs> Tiffany Salinko Hockey. I have to say I love coming down here to this division. You have so much energy in it radiates through me. So I'm very excited right now at this time to bring up the Table Topics contestants. If you can please join me at the front of the stage in the order in which you spoke today. Everybody 
want to use a mic right now, or do you feel like you're loud enough? What would we like to do? We're using it? Okay. Yeah, we'll use it. Okay. Carolina, welcome. Three beginning questions for yourself. What club are you representing today? I'm representing Heinz Verbal Aces. How long have you been in Toastmasters? Eight months. Oh, wow. And what is your Toastmasters educational level? I am on speech number nine. Right. I see a CC in your future. <laughs> great, great, great. Looking at your biography here, I see that you like cooking, sewing, and gardening. Which is your favorite? I would think cooking because that's not what they beg me to do all the time. But starting tomorrow, no, Monday, we're doing a whole staff weight loss and conditioning. So I have 16 staff members and we're all going to be on shape, in shape. So on the 29th, you'll see a cinnamon ring. <laughs> just as offices hold. I think you're much more than a member to get up here and to compete today. So I, I want to make sure that I announce that to you. And then also, I'm looking for, and I don't see it on here, is a quote. So is there a quote or something that you really live by or that you bring about in yourself every day? Put you on the spot. It's table topics. I really live by treating others as I would want people to treat me. So I try to love my neighbors. I try to bring positive thoughts. And I hope to live that every day. And if I share that, then it'll continue to share amongst even my staff members. And I already see the difference in them, so I want to be that example. Right. Well, Carolina, I would love to thank you for participating today, and thank you so much for coming out. emotional that has yes, to be, so yeah. absolutely. And then I look at your favorite quote and it says, if I can help someone along the way, then my living has not been in vain. Would you like to expand? 
Well, I guess that's that's my walk. That's my journey every day. And then if I can help someone anytime, then I feel like I've been successful that day. That I've accomplished what God has allowed me to do that day. And so that's my mantra. Great. Well, thank you for participating. What club are you representing today? I'm actually representing two. One is the Oak Park Club in Oak Park. And the other one is the Windy City Professional Speakers Club. And how long have you been in Toastmasters? This is my one year anniversary. Vibrating, so I'm going to try not to. <laughs> Great job, absolutely. And then, um, what is your educational level in Toastmasters? I have a CC, and I'm on my way to Advanced Bronze and my CL. All right. So I see his notable accomplishments. It says speaker at District 54 Leadership Institute at the 2014 conference. So do you also partake in District 54 as well? No, I was just asked to speak. Well, that is very notable. Congratulations on that. <laughs> and then it says, what inspires you most? Authenticity and living in the moment. Do you live by that every day? I'm assuming you probably do. Can you expand upon that a little bit for us? Sure. The more I am authentic, the more I can listen to my inner soul and speak that truth. And when I wake up every morning and take a quiet moment to do that, it, it just helps. Um, so... Absolutely, I agree. And your quote that I must share is, your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your undertaking. Understanding. Understanding. Mm -hmm. Saturday. <laughs> so would you like to tell us why that is your favorite quote? Sure. I think as we've all heard in amazing speeches today, we've all had a, a pain in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we can, the choices we make around that pain either minimize or expand our lives. Mm -hmm. And through my years of pain, I decided to live an expanded life and then pay that forward. Well, thank you very much for competing. Hello, Tammy. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Getting organized here. Okay. Three questions to you. What club are you representing today? Seven seven one A A O. I feel like I'm in an empire commercial. <laughs> and how long have you been in Toastmasters? Since I was last year, so. <clears throat> and your educational level? Uh, I'm working on my eighth speech. All right. So you're Favorite time of the manual, you're just getting into the board advanced things, and it's great. Okay. Looking here, I see interest in hobbies, public motivational speaking. Do you do that obviously outside of Toastmasters? I do, and I would like to do more of it. So, if any of you are interested in me doing so, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people plug, you have to do that. <laughs> What inspires you? Inspiring other people to test their boundaries of creativity. How do you do that? Every time someone tells me something that they are scared to do or can't do or thought about, they're <coughs> always asking, so what's stopping you? What's holding you back? And most times, it's the creativity. They're afraid to be creative because they're afraid that someone will shun upon them that they're not creative enough or that's just silly, that's dumb. No, express yourself. Be creative. Bring it out. Show it. It's what makes you you. You're an individual. Right. So we are all individuals, and sometimes we forget that, what we are. Favorite quote, I'm going to bring about this because this is something that I've been looking at a little bit lately with a, a few of my friends as to what's your why, so it kind of falls into this. To know yourself is to know your purpose. So what is your purpose, do you think? It took <coughs> a really long time to figure that out. And you hear this a lot. I had to do a lot of soul searching. And I would really believe is using my voice to really inspire and to touch others. 
touch them in a way that they'll want to speak up and inspire more. So if I can get you to inspire to tell your story, well then I know that my purpose has been fulfilled. So please tell your story. <laughs> And how long have you been a Toastmasters? I've been a Toastmaster for six years, four months, and four days. <laughs> All right. And educational level, although I know. I am proud to call myself a distinguished Toastmaster. <laughs> Traveling, what is the most interesting place you have traveled to? Um, it's table topics. I have to put you Actually, forward. I haven't been to galaxies far, far away yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's where middle school comes in. But, um, <laughs> but I lived in Japan. I lived, I lived in Japan for two years. And that was really, really interesting. I lived in a Zen Buddhist monastery for six months of my life. Also, before you become impressed, I actually got thrown out of a Zen Buddhist monastery. <laughs> <laughs> for a New, New Yorker, living in a Zen Buddhist monastery is kind of hard. So my Zen master called me in one day. He says, in a very proud, distinguished voice, you will get more out of this once you leave. And I'm like, no. <laughs> He has to bring it, and that's why I compete, because no matter how many times you've won, there's always that seven minutes and 30 seconds or two minutes where you have to be that person. You have to embody it, and that's what I love about those type of movies. And it could be, uh, it could be Forrest Gump. I love Forrest Gump. That's when he loved Jenny. To the grave, he loved Jenny. My favorite scene is when he looked at her gravesite and said, if there's anything you ever need, anything at all, I'm always here. I mean, that's just love all the way through. I knew maybe two words, and that was it. 
and they were sitting there looking at me like, mm-hmm, what's he going to say? And at the end of it, it was absolutely amazing. They asked me to come back to dinner at Roosevelt University, and when I walked into a room, literally there's this many people, maybe more, and they gave me a standing ovation. Wow. And the next day, they asked me to, they was getting money together to take me to France to speak. And that's because of Toastmasters. Wow. I've been to France, so if I can get in your suitcase, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you don't like French red wine, I don't think you love red wine, but it tastes delicious when you drink it with real French people. <laughs> <laughs> All different tastes. I definitely agree. Well, thank you very for competing today. Thank you so much. How long have you been with Salesmasters? A year and three months. What club are you here representing this afternoon? The Board of Literary Talkers. Okay. And finally, what is your current Toastmasters designation? CC plus 365 speeches. <laughs> Lalika, you shared with us a, a very good story about your upbringing in Lagos and coming here. And, you know, I've met a lot of people that want to be professional speakers. We all work towards it, we're, we ambition it, we have our vision board of it. You did it. You have your own company called Lekan Ahmed International. Tell us about the biggest challenge that you face, not as a speaker, but as an entrepreneur, to get that company up and going. Wow. That... Actually, thank you for asking me that question. And the first thing I'm going to say, that if you have a dream, do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. This is an original, original quote for me, that in the pursuit of your dreams, it is not how long it takes, mm. but the willingness to remain focused, despite the challenges that comes your way. Because right. you will face challenges. Yes. <coughs> now, when I came to this country, I told my friends, I said, you know, I want to be a speaker. In Nigeria, I had my first degree in electrical electronics engineering. So when I told them, they smiled. They said, you know, you have a very, very big, uh, thick accent. No one will listen to you. So I stopped speaking. But fortunately for me, I found Toastmasters. Right. You know, I found Toastmasters back in Nigeria, but then it was $36. $36 was a year salary of my father. So that's not for me. So when I saw that here, I saw Toastmasters, I said, this looks familiar. But now I can afford. <laughs> That was how I started. Yeah. Registered my company, they call me international, and uh, I do more business. So. Right. Right. 
Megan, and I want to thank you for bringing it on the stage today. I want to share with you two things. I want to share with you a certificate of participation for being in our division contest and a special gift from Cassandra Lee, your division governor, just for you. Everyone, a round of applause for Megan. This is very mixed. Here we go. Here again. We know how long you've been with Toastmasters. Yes. We know what club you're here well, with. Well, actually, now it's six years, four months. <laughs> Ten minutes. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's a whole lot of difference. Awesome. So you talked about giving that speech to a group called Sabon. From the school from Sabon University. Sabon University. Okay, Sabon University. What one in... You, you said you had a lot of people that came up to you. They were certainly trying to, very impressed with your presentation. Who impressed you at that presentation? What impressed me the most, what I found out about French people that I didn't know, is that despite the fact that they're very passionate, and we always see them as very passionate, <coughs> they're really not. They don't tell their stories. They don't tell each other personal things. So. One of the professors literally came up to me and said, I'm going to start teaching differently because this is how I told in my presentation, this is how I get to my kids. I tell stories. I tell stories all the time. And then literally when you understand how a story is set up, the hero is you. You are the bridge between you and the audience. And when she saw that, she said, I never thought about teaching like this because they really emphasize keeping the distance between the professor and the student. But once you get into it, so I started to, and I showed them how to make mistakes. So in my presentation, I was talking about baseball. And I'm looking in the audience, and I realized, n glassy look, none of them. I said, do you guys know baseball? Mm -mm. And I said, let's switch gears. Soccer. They all got excited. <laughs> and I changed the whole presentation right there, talking about soccer. and they. Literally, was cheer I had them cheering like they were at a World Cup game. <laughs> right then and there, that's what happened. So, and they were totally impressed. How did you do that? And I talked about, they don't eat peanut butter and jelly there. Oh. And I said, what kind of country you got? <laughs> I said, what do you eat? We eat Nutella. I was just like, Nutella. I love Nutella, even though I don't like it. But <laughs> that's what so they were very impressed with just my ease of switching gears. I'm going to have to keep this answer with you one minute. But I'm a Star Wars guy, too. And I see you as Qui-Gon Jinn. You are a school, you are a Chicago public school teacher. Yes, sir. Who is your Obi-Wan in your class and why? Who is my Obi-Wan in my class? Um, my principal. In my, cla oh, in my class. You are Qui-Gon. You have the training side. Ah! That young man right there. What is his uh, name? Nike on Riley. Ah. Nike on stand, stand up. up. Stand 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 up. Why is Obi Wan your? Why is he Nike your Obi Wan? Because Nike on consistently allows me to keep it real. No matter how I can be speaking up here, Nike on say. Say that again, Mr. Mixon, and bring it down. Make me understand it. He makes me tell stories. <laughs> and he looks at me all the time and says, what? And I'm like, okay, let's do this again. And it's an absolute pleasure for you to be here today. This is, oh, wow. this is what it means to be here. Is telling stories when you get to the point where you can take all that information that you have and turn it into seven minutes to 30 seconds or turn it into uh, I woke up this morning saying I'm going to change your life today because you will never forget this you may forget you know, I had this big waterhead guy teacher and he took me to a On my standard three questions. How long have you been with Toastmasters? Seven years. What club are you representing here this afternoon? Four seventeen. It is ACD. I'm also working on my CL. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, something that caught my eye in your profile. 
I see a lot of interest, I see a lot of hobbies from a lot of people, but I don't see people making greeting cards. It's very rare. So We are so much more than what people say. We are so much more than a feeling great, a bad hair day, a missed opportunity, a broken heart, or a broken leg. We are so much more than people's perceptions and limitations. We are so much more than the past we have survived. We are so much more with each day that passes because we learn by and by. We are so much more than what our eyes see, and if we try, we can be greater than any lie we've ever believed, and greater beyond any of our dreams. Because greater is God who lives inside of those who believe. We are so much more. <laughs> because she actually just went to my next question, so I was going to ask you about that. But you won the Chicago Poetry Talent Show, if I'm not mistaken. Tell me a little bit about that. How long have you been a poet? And obviously you infused that in your cards. And I'm going to ask you, go back to that first question, do you just do standard holiday cards? Or do you do something a little... Something, something. Well, it's, a little, it's a little something, something. Everything I write comes from my heart. The words I write, they come from my heart. They are planted as seeds from the word of God, bringing forth his flowers into the world to bless and encourage you all. I am an inspiration to people because I write encouraging words that lift the heart. Yeah. Ooh. At this contest, there were rappers, there were other poets, there were singers and dancers, and I was a little intimidated. Because I didn't have any music. I didn't have any of that new stuff. All I had was me and the mic in the uh, first place. All right. Yeah. How long have you been with Toastmasters? Uh, three and a half years. What club are you here representing this effort? Representing UIC College of Engineering. And what is your current Toastmasters designation? Distinguished Toastmaster. Nice. I love your quote because every time I read a quote, it's always this. You know, roundabout way of getting to the point, yours is it. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken by Oscar Wilde. <laughs> and when did you first come across this quote, and how did it impact you when you first read it or heard it? I first came across it in my other club, Extreme Toastmasters, where every week we would have a quote for that evening. And I went on the web, where else? Look for quotes. I saw that and I said, well, that's kind of clever. And it's a variation of that thought that you've probably heard Craig Valentine say, that when you're speaking, don't say, I thought to myself, because who else are you going to think to? <laughs> it's the same thing. Be yourself. Everyone else is taking it. So, so I like that kind of thinking. Right. Again, the other thing that I saw that also caught my eye, there's a lot of things that inspire people, books, movies, all these fun things. What inspires you is a night's sleep. <laughs> a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably know that feeling. When you have a good night's sleep, you get up in the morning and you feel inspired like me to take a shower. <laughs> Questions. How long have you been with Toastmasters? Almost three years now. And what club are you representing this afternoon? Maywood Public Library. And what is your current Toastmasters designation? I'm working on my HCP. Sure. Right. Sharice, 
and I remember talking to you outside of the South Division Governor's Contest, and that was when Lee Jones was the South Division co Governor. And you and I spent about 15, 20 minutes just talking about life at that point in time. And I remember you telling me that you were a musician and a recording artist. And I see, I know you shared with us a little bit about some of the changes you've had in your life, but music is an inspiration for many. And I'm sure that that's helped you move forward in your life through the dark times and even the highlights. I would like for you to share with me, if you can, a song that perhaps you've created during your dark period. And are you recording that now? A song I recorded in my dark period. I probably would be many. I've written many songs. I am a published uh, songwriter on Billboard. And I will say, when will we learn? No. I would, but if my voice were in, I would. I really would. I really would. Uh oh, he's taking my question. No, 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 no. <laughs> but now you seem to take a lot of inspiration from being a life coach. Yes. Being a life coach takes a lot of work. Yes. And you have to see a lot of different perspectives for that person to understand how you're helping them. Can you share with us a client maybe that you've had that you had to work extraordinarily hard for to help them see what they needed to? Absolutely. I find in life that most of us all of us have areas of ourself where we have fears and doubts and worries, right? And most people that I work with, they're wanting to jump over some hurdle and to be the best version of themselves in this moment of now. I have a company as well, and I always say, why rock when you can quake? That's so yesterday. Why go full throttle, be epic. My company is called Epic Excel. So I'm always working with people to help them rise above, to go past the blue, where imagination doesn't even exist. So with most people, that's what we're doing because most of us want to be epic, right? You're quaking, baby. <laughs> Same three questions. How long have you been with Toastmasters? Since December of 1994. And what club are you representing here this afternoon? 771 And of course, what is your current Toastmasters designation? That was my 10th CC speech, so I'm waiting for my certificate and everything. <laughs> So a lot of things I heard in your speech were great, but I want to go first to your profile. And the first thing, and of course, you probably already know what I'm going to go at. Yes, yes. Her interests and her notable accomplishments. <laughs> now, I could go there, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany yes. went there, and I made her red, and I, I just learned from that. So here's this. You have a passion for figure competition and bodybuilding. Really? Yeah, I did. I, it's clearly written here, bodybuilding. So I'm not making this up. Tell me about this passion. Where did it start from? And tell us a little bit about some of the competitions you've been in. Oh, I'll read a mic. <laughs> <laughs> it started several years ago. About six years ago, I reconnected with a, um, a guy I dated a long time. ago sitting right there. <laughs> and I stood in the mirror, looked at myself, and said, man, I used to be really, really cute. I need to do something. And that year was my class reunion. Um, he, there was also a bodybuilding contest he was having. I said, you know what, I think that I will try to you know, accomplish a lot of different things. I had a fear of standing on stage. I didn't like my body, and I said, you know what, I need to just jump right on in. So I decided at 200 pounds then, I decided to go and try to compete. And by my class reunion, I was able to drop that dress on my body, no spikes. I was <laughs> the contest was in September, I won first place, and I won first place in several other contests as well. And I was in my late 40s now. Wow. wow. Last question for you. I had the chance to meet your friend, boyfriend, husband, 
Some. <laughs> Tiger, can you stand up for a moment? This is Tiger, this is Valerie. This is Valerie. Tiger and I just had a quick passing in the hallway or a quick passing here and he had food in his hand. You know, it's usually just customary to be nice and polite as Toastmasters do, but he came back and he just wanted to say, hi, how did you find him? <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> Let me tell you, this happened years ago, it was like 30, 35 years ago, about 35 years ago. I was at a radio breakfast at the Taste Disco, if you all know what that is. Yeah, yeah. And I was sitting there wearing a suit, with my legs crossed, and he walked over to me and he said, um, would you like to dance? And I looked up at him and I said, I'm a little tall for you, aren't I? And he said, so? <laughs> that was the first time that my height did not matter. And I fell in love with him instantly. Aww. Aww. scenes helping me today, yet instead of me reading through the list, I would like to do it in this way. I would like for every 2014-2015 dignitary to please stand. I will allow you to tell the audience who you are. Now audience, don't applaud until the very last dignitary has been introduced. Is that fair enough? Yes. All right. Dignitaries, please stand. I will start with our contest masters, so I'm going to start with Mr. Acha, and then we will do like the wave down, so we're going to go across, weave it back, weave it, but you guys got it. Uh, audience will applaud when they're done. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Nick Paul Acha, and I'm District 30 Detention Center. Hello everyone, I'm Tiffany Slinko Howard, I'm your Northwest Division Governor. Hello everyone, I'm Mary Reed, and I'm the Area Governor for 52. Yay! I'm Dean Marie Smith, Area Governor for South 55. <coughs> Calvin Gibbs, West 71, Area Governor. Donna Weston, District Governor. Uh, Jerome Rowley, Area Governor for S56. Elizabeth Stevenson, District Sergeant at Arms. <laughs> Lily Simmons, Area Governor for B17. <coughs> Greg Thompson, Area Governor, Northwest Division. Hey. Frank Hesser, West Division Governor. Tawana Jelt, Area Governor for South 51. Melissa Newport, Lieutenant Governor of Marketing. Lawrence Fields, Area Governor for South 54. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Lawrence Fields, Area Governor for South 54. Okay, now. Don Williams, Administrative Assistant to District Governor, as well as Region 5 Webmasters. Rich Muhammad, Central North Division Governor. Barbara Beckley, North Division Governor, and happy to be here. <laughs> and? I just like to 
<laughs> as division governor. <laughs> Past division governor, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot who I was. <laughs> uh, Carol and Arthur, 2007-2008, past history governor. Okay. And... Dushan Mosley, S-53 area governor. <laughs> and... Cassandra Griffin, district public relations officer. <laughs> and Cassandra Dilo Dialogue, Lee, South Division governor. Run the applause. What I recognize is that my role this year as South Division Governor actually is in the footsteps of many. Some of them have been, as my top pen says here, <coughs> mentor to me, and that's the very reason why I'm here today. With that being said, I would like to recognize those who have served as South Division Governor in the past. Please stand. <coughs> Say my last name is Lee, his first name is Lee. Lee Jones, everyone, tell everyone what year you served as South Division Governor. I served as South Division Governor for the 2013-2014 Audience, let's do this. We still have a few South Division Governors from the past standing. And as we go around, we'll allow them to give an opportunity to say what year they served. And I know that they're thinking, I can see them calculating in their head. Elizabeth, go next. Uh, I could just kill you. <laughs> uh, South Division Governor, I think it was. 2010, 2011. Mm. Oh, yes, because I served on you. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Elizabeth. Mr. Brooks. Hello. <laughs> I believe it was 1999-2000. Don? Don? I believe it was 2011-2012. 2011-2012. Uh, oh, distinction. What you have to recognize in Toastmasters is that you start in your club and you start off as a member and then you progress to doing some form of a leadership role. You might be the secretary, you may end up being sergeant at arms, or you might be one of the top four, the president, VPE, VPM, and VPPR. And if you don't know what those acronyms stand for, see anyone with a Toastmaster pin on. <laughs> <laughs> Yet meaning you will move into leadership roles in your club and then you start to advance outside of the club and then you move into the district. With that being said, we heard from Carolyn Arthur, who mentioned she was a past district governor. Recognize she's a past district governor that was produced by a South Division club. Yet we still have more in the room. Mr. Brooks, can you please stand? And anyone else that served as a past district governor and you were a member of a South Division club? So look at that. You see, some of you looking around going, hmm. Yes, How many people do we see? We only see two standing, right? Mm -hmm. Carolyn, can you remind everyone what year you served as district governor? Yeah. 2007, 2008. 2007, 2008. And Mr. Brooks, how about you? 2003, 2004. 2003, 2004. Let's give them a round of applause. legacies and history in the South Division and for those of you that are club officers you begin to become exposed to a taste of that you know, I say regular members you really don't have a clue of what's going on until you get involved and once you start getting involved then a whole new world opens it opens up to you and you become exposed to so many people and you begin to realize that they've done so many things on their Toastmasters journey. And speaking of doing things on a Toastmasters journey, 
This was a second round for me, serving as a division governor. I served as division governor in 2001, 2002 in Central, when Central Division was only one division. <laughs> that was almost a decade, that was over a decade ago, right? Yeah, and so what I wanted to make certain that I do is recognize for this second journey, my team of area governors, because I would not have been able to do this event or anything else that we did this year. My term is about to come to an end, June 30th. And I want to publicly recognize my team. Area S51, Area Governor Tawana Jelks, come forward. Area S52, Area Governor Mary Reed, come forward. Area Governor Dushan Mosley. <laughs> Area S54, Area Governor Lawrence, my field of dreams. <laughs> Area S55, Area Governor DeMarie Smith. Please. <laughs> And Area Governor for S56, Mr. Jerome Raleigh. Area S55, Area Governor. We are in the process of looking for brand new leaders, yet I want to go back for a brief moment just to recognize this team. When I made the decision in February of last year that I was going to stretch my leadership skills and take on a management role, and do South Division Governor this year, I knew I would need a solid team. And instantly, word went out. Did y'all hear Cassandra gonna run? <laughs> the people at Dow are gonna be the Division Governor. When people found out, at least three individuals instantly stepped up to wow. serve on a team because they said they wanted to support me. Step <laughs> forward, Dushan Mosley, DeMarie Smith, and Jerome Raleigh. That was in February when they found out I got accepted, the nomination went forward, the district made the announcement, I got voted in at the April Spring Conference. Mm -hmm. They were already on board. I needed three more area governors. Word continued to spread that I was the official division governor. And there were two other individuals that were like, I remember her, I, 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 you know what? I, I would like to work with her. Please step forward to Juana Jelks and Mary Reed. And then the official start of the new Toastmaster Club year, July 1st, 2014, which is actually my birthday. I got an invitation to go and install the new officers for Pathfinders Toastmasters. At that point time, I only needed one more area governor. And there was this guy whose energy was just bouncing off the wall when I walked in the room. And he just seemed like, I don't want to say fresh meat. <laughs> Then he seemed like great, coachable, great, coachable leadership material. And so I talked to the leaders of that club and asked, hey, what do you guys think about Lawrence Fields serving as area S54 area governor? They were like, oh, he would be great. He's going to need some coaching, though. He'll be great. I approached him. And I asked, and out of his own mouth, he said, if you're willing to coach me, I'm willing to be coached. Right. Please step forward. Right. Right. Now, I'm making this a quick trip around, and actually, to one, I'm going to step in front of you for a brief moment. What I want to present and if each of you, Tawana, do me a favor, just take the stack and take one and then pass the rest of them down. What they are all being presented with right now is a ribbon for their club's banner. And the ribbon actually says, home of the area governor. And I received one 
saying home of the division governor. So we give those to our home clubs, and the home clubs put those on their banners. And I wanted to say public delete to them as well. They got the blue sheet that Iqbal pointed out that all contestants at International received, that also every contestant at Table Topics received, that every functionary received, which was a personal word of inspiration for me to simply say thank you. Yet I could not let my term end without me publicly recognizing this team of hardworking, amazing area governors. They've been there to support your clubs. They've been over backwards. We've lost several clubs. And boy, I tell you, we fought to keep a lot of the clubs that we've lost open. And we know it's hard. It's so hard. Not to be a superhero. But it's so hard. It's so hard to be a leader. And these members, in spite of it all, still help to support your clubs. And I would love for you to assist me in honoring them with a standing ovation. Thank you, South Division team. Now remember, we can't go on vacation, right? Our district governor is sitting over there, Donna Weston, is looking like, okay, we can't go on vacation yet, South Division team. We still have work to do. June 30th, our term officially ends. June 30th, the team, it actually ends. We have a few announcements for the South Division, which primarily I am going to send out next week an email to each member of the South Division sending you a link to our electronic version of the South Division Chronicles. It will remind you, pay your club dues, get new club officers, and also it's going to highlight the fact that we have a South Division team member that's going to be speaking at an upcoming TED Talk in about a week or so. Now, I can't tell you who it is. That means you have to go out and find out. And one other place where you will be able to find out this information, and actually if you go check it out this evening, you'll be able to see the electronic newsletter for April South Division Chronicle, and that's the new South Division Meetup Group webpage. We have the South Division Meetup Group webpage, and let's give Cassandra Griffin, our District 30 Public Relations Officer, a round of applause for you. Those were division announcements, and as I said, I'll send an email, it'll have a link. You can also go out tonight and just go to meetup.com, type in South Division Toastmasters, our webpage will come up and you'll begin to immediately access that information before I send it to you. And don't forget, for those of you who don't have me in your regular inbox, check for me in your junk mailbox. Because when I send you an email from crlee2003 at hotmail.com, if we're not already friends, that's where I'll be. And that's where you get the information. And speaking of announcements, let's do a few district and then we'll get into the presentation of trophies. District Governor, John Lester. few minutes talking about Spring Conference. It's only three weeks away. Wow. <laughs> so anybody today who wins table topics, they will be competing in the district contest on Friday night. It starts at 8 o'clock. Anyone, the person who wins the international speech contest will be competing on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Now we are going out of our way this time to make this a spectacular event. I don't know how many people know, but the district is the 65th anniversary this year. All right. We actually started in 1950, so we're going to have all kinds of celebrations around 1950. The one thing we're encouraging you to do is to come dressed in 50s gear. Okay. Now those of you who know me, I love Halloween, I love to get dressed up in outfits, so I already have figured out my outfits for Friday night and a different one for Saturday. And just listen to this lineup. On Friday night, we're going to have some networking, and then we're going to have a talent show. So if Ken is still here, we need people with talent. 
I think we only have a few people sign up. We have a magician, we have someone dancing, singing, a group doing something else. So if you want to do it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to do that actually before the table topics. After the table topics contest, we're then going to have music by power play. So we're going to have music for a couple of hours. So that's a pretty fun Friday, right? Yes. Now, how many people are going to win or earn an award by April 15th? <laughs> okay, so you are going to be honored on Saturday morning. All you have to do there is get there by 7 a.m. <laughs> And then, this is incredible, how many people know the name Wayne Mesmer? He is the person who sings the national anthem at the Bulls and the Cubs and that over the years. He is actually coming to our conference and he is going to sing the national anthem after we have a color guard. And then he also is going to be speaking at 11 o'clock, so he's going to be doing one of the keynotes. Now, during our business meeting, and it's very important that anyone who is a president or vice president of education come to vote, because we need a quorum in order to vote. So we're going to be voting for new officers for 215, 216. I will not be one of them. <laughs> and we also have to vote on the alignment, and right now I think that's it. But, uh, so if you can't make it, there are proxies that you can get and sign and give them to someone else in your club that is attending to bring so they can vote in your place. After the business meeting, we're going to have lunch. We're going to have a bunch of awards that people have earned, club ambassador, and the clubs that have all earned at least, you know, DCP points and things like that. Then we're going to have the international speech contest for that person who wins that contest will then go on to the International Convention, which this year is in Las Vegas, at Caesars. After the speech contest, we're going to have dinner and some awards. A couple of people that are going to be speaking over the course of those two days is uh, Alan Shaner, the International Director from Toastmasters. He sits on the Board of Directors. Also, a lady by the name of Cheryl Rausch. She's the coach and author you know, professional speaker, etc. Now right now, until tomorrow, the early bird special is $125 for your entire club to attend. So if there's five people going, there's $25 each. Starting Monday, I think it goes up to $135, and then a week later, $145. So I encourage you, it's going to be exciting. We're going to be celebrating the 65th anniversary. It's also Toastmasters' 90th anniversary. All kinds of fun activities. You can come dressed in your 50s gear as a beatnik or poodle skirt or whatever. <laughs> so, hope to see all of you there. Thanks. While I have our District 30 governor up and at the lecture, I think this is a perfect time to start segueing right into the announcement of our winners. I want to love the candidate Paul to join me as well. I love Tiffany and Iqbal. They've been keeping me on point all day, and that's part of the team, right? Part of the team. Now, I was handed the envelope. I have no clue. I am finding out for the first time with you. As I look at the list, and this is also a camera opportunity as well. <laughs> as I look at the list, I would love for the 2015 South Division third place winner in table topics to please approach and receive her trophy, Miss Kate Webster.
and this is perfect because once we get all the contestants up front, we'll have that perfect photo opportunity there. Looking at the list again, 2015 South Division Table Topic second place winner, please approach the lectern to receive your trophy, Miss Tammy Brewington. Yes. Table topic winner, another trophy to add to the first place collection is Mr. Barry <laughs> hard to get this photo opportunity moment so allow the team to get connected with the contestants and for those of you who have cameras please get a few shots of us and that sort of thing when you're looking at the list for the very first time. Now this is the contest that has two more levels. It has actually three from today, meaning we have district at the district conference. The district 30 winner for international then goes on to compete in the Toastmasters International semifinals, which will be in August at the international convention. Winning the semifinal round then places you on what I call the world stage, which is where you will compete to become Toastmasters International World Champion of Public Speaking. With that said, the 2015 South Division International third place winner, please step forward to receive your trophy, Ms. Yvonne Bailey. Division International Speech Contest winner for second place. I would like for you to also step forward to accept your trophy, Miss Sharice Arrington. <laughs> Thank 
15 South Division International Speech Contest first place winner that will be competing on Saturday night at the District 30 Speech Contest. Please step forward to receive your first place trophy, Miss yeah. Valerie. Yeah. Yeah. Officially adjourned. Thank you.